Hello there everybody, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and uh, again today I'm out on my Farron OS Linux uh, desktop and I thought today I would talk about a topic that I wanted to get into for a while that, uh, that people have asked for and that is let's discuss Linux file permissions file permissions in the command line and uh, how do we go about uh, working with those and so we'll take a look at that right after this Okay, I'm out in my terminal now, and uh, I thought we'd take a look at the file permissions in the terminal. And so let's go ahead and uh, let's run a, a PWD to see where we are here. So my print working directory is I'm in Home Data Pioneer, uh, and so that's where I'm currently located in the file system. And I'm going to do a Who Am I to see who I am. I am Data Pioneer. All right, and so let's clear the screen. And let's run a listing to see what we have. And so this is a, a current listing. The ls is the list storage command in Linux. And that list uh, storage that we have, and this is the file system structure from where we are in the current file system hierarchy, which is my home directory, Data Pioneer, uh, home Data Pioneer. And so I have a... Um, a directory that I've created called Sandbox. I'm going to CD into that directory and let's clear the screen run a listing of that and you can see that I have a uh, directory called testdir and I have two files one called test file one one called test file two so let me rather than just running an ls let me do a an lh which is the uh, option for long listing human readable and if I run that it gives me a little a better perspective of uh, the files and directories themselves and it also exposes something in the structure here that we need to look at uh, which is our topic for today and that is the permissions associated with the directory and with the um, the files themselves first thing you need to notice here is I've got this directory here test dir it is in blue now uh, this is color coded in the terminal and it's set up uh, you know specifically for each uh, distribution of Linux uh, distributions of Linux do not have to expose the colors like this or display the colors like this uh, but normally if if it does blue indicates a directory and white indicates a regular file okay so we have two regular files here and a directory now the permissions are uh, out here on the left hand side so let's look first of all at the very first column of this line when we do an ls tac lh here on to list out these directories and files the very first uh, listing which is test dir which I told you was a directory I created um, we have a D in the first position here and that D indicates that it is a directory All right. Um, if you don't have the D but you have just the dash here that means that this is just a regular file uh, and it's not a directory now there are other symbols besides D and dash uh, that are available in Linux uh, we want to get into that today because that's beyond the scope of this particular video but uh, just recognize the fact that a D is a directory and that a if a D is missing has a dash there then it is a regular file okay so the permissions here follow the directory or file designation in this listing that we have. And so there are uh, nine elements here that follow. And they are in groups of three. And so we have these three here. And then we have these three here. And then we have the final three here. Now, what are those? All right, so the first three, which is R, W, and X, uh, represents the owner of this directory or file. All right. The next three represents the group owner assignment. So this is the owner of the file and this is the group owner of the file or directory, in this case a directory. 
And then the last three indicate everybody else. This is the everybody else or the world. All right. So who is the owner of this file? So if we go out here to the next column, we're going to ignore this column for, for now and go out to the next column here beyond the permissions. This very first column here, designation, indicates the owner of this directory or file. And so here, Data Pioneer is the owner of Tester. Why is uh, Data Pioneer, which is me, why is Data Pioneer the owner of Tester? Because I created it using the make derv command. All right, and so that means that Data Pioneer has these permissions, which is in the first position here of the set of three, the one, two, and three set. So Data Pioneer can read write and execute. That's what the R, W, and X stand for. So R is for read, W is for write, and X is for execute. Now, reading and writing and executing a directory is a little bit different than reading and writing a uh, and executing a file. We'll talk about that in a moment. But just, just uh, understand that Data Pioneer is the owner of that directory, and Data Pioneer is the owner of test file 1 and test file 2. And then also the Data Pioneer group, which is the group that Data Pioneer belongs to, which is a group that's created automatically when Data Pioneer's account is created in Linux, um, also has read, write, and execute. All right, and and then everybody else can only read and execute the directory. Now, what does uh, what does that mean exactly? Well, first of all, before we get into that. Let's look down at the file, and so the file that I created, Data Pioneer has the ability to read and write to that file, but does not have the ability to execute the file. What does that mean? That means that that you cannot run this file as a program or as a script. All right, it doesn't have the ability to run the file as a script. It isn't a script, so it doesn't matter at this point. Um, in the second group of uh, permissions here, read, write, and execute, we have no execute bit turned on, so we can only read and write. And so that means that Data Pioneer, the group, members of that group, can read and write this file, but they can't execute the file. And then everybody else has the ability to read the file, and they can see it, and they can read the contents of the file, but they can't write to the file, nor can they execute the file as well. Similarly, up here as a directory, uh, the difference here between what read, write, and execute pertaining to a directory means as opposed to pertaining to a file, when Data Pioneer, as the owner of the test directory here, test dir, when he can read, write, and execute, that means that he can look at the file, he can read the file, he can see it listed in the file structure as we can do it here. He can write to the file, which means he can uh, uh, put files in there. He can write to it, create files within the tester directory. And then execute means that he can descend into the directory. He can change directory into tester. So if I do a CD tester, I, you can see that I have the ability to, I don't have any files in there, but I do have a subdirectory called subdir. And so I created that uh, subdir by running the make dir command uh, to create that. And so I have the ability to write to that. I have the ability to cd to that directory. And I can also cd to subdir as well. Okay, so I have the ability to do that. And why do I have the ability to do that? That's because I have this executable here uh, in the first group of three, which belongs to the owner of that directory, which is me, Data Pioneer. And so if I didn't have the X, I couldn't descend into tester. All right. So um, let's, uh, let's take a look at this file, test file 1. I have the ability to read the file. I have the ability to write that file. And, but I don't have the ability to execute the file. Now, test file 1 is not an executable, but I can make it an executable if I so desire. All right, so if I come back up to test file one and make that executable so I can demonstrate uh, what making that executable will do to the file and how it will change the permissions for that file for us 
and for me specifically since I'm the owner of test file one what I can do is I can uh, go up to up the directory tree doing a CD dot dot back up to sandbox let's do a listing again and so we have um, do a listing out and so we have test file one not executable at this point so if I run uh, nano which is a text editor against test file one all right and open it up I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some uh, script in here I'm gonna do ls lh okay which is not the way you create a script um, so that what but for demonstration purposes I'm just gonna do it this way uh, there is a proper way of, of creating a script and this isn't it but I'm just gonna do it so just to to show you what it's executing a script looks like so if I do a control X and say yes and hit enter it's going to uh, save that and so let's uh, go back out and now let's do a uh, let's clear the screen and let's do a listing again of the file structure and so we have tester we have now some content in test file one the file which is what I just put in there uh, and to make that executable what I'm going to do is you know, here we have R W and nothing here for data pioneer and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use a command called the change mod command and do a plus X which gives an executable bit across both the owner a group owner and everybody else all right you may not want to do it this way but I'm going to do it this way just for demonstration purposes adding the executable bit to all three groups and then the file that we want to uh, apply the uh, executable bit to which is test file one all right and then now if I rerun a listing here you can see that test file one is now green now green uh, if your particular distro um, in the terminal uh, presents it this way indicates that this is an executable file all right so that's what the green stands for but you don't need to know that colored combination or, or designation um, all you need to know is, is that if you look in the group permissions here and owner permissions and other permissions for the owner RWX that X is showing up now it's also showing up in the uh, group itself for data pioneer the data pioneer group and it's also showing up for uh, everybody else and so everybody else can execute this file as well and so to execute the file uh, what I'm going to do is come down here put a dot means which is means that I'm in the current directory of sandbox I'm executing the file called test file one and what it does is it runs ls dash lh which runs a long listing of the uh, contents of that script okay which is test file one so now test file one is a script and I'm able to execute it because I have the executable bit right there uh, as data pioneer uh, and if I was a member of the group of data pioneer I would be able to do the same thing and if everybody else will be able to do the same as well all right and so uh, that makes that file executable and we're able to run it as an executable as opposed to just a regular file so let me go ahead and remove that now and so if I take and run chmod and I do a minus X against the file test file one that removes the executable bit and so if I now do another listing out of that particular um, structure here we have that uh, for sandbox we can see that now the test file has been returned to a regular file it no longer has the executable bit now let's say that I wanted to make this particular file since it does have that content in there if you can see we can cat the file and you can see that we do have LSLH so when we run that file as an executable it will list out the uh, storage in long human readable format and so if I wanted to make that only executable for me as the owner but not for the group or everybody else then what I can do let me run that out again and what I can do is I can only add the executable bit here 
for that particular owner, Data Pioneer. All right, and so if I want to add the executable bit on this particular file, which has that content in there, um, just to me, for Data Pioneer as the user of that file, or user owner, what I can do is I can run the chmod or change mod command and I can take and say I want to add the executable bit only to the user so u plus x against test file one alright and so now that I've done that if I take a look at the, the listing again can see that it is green which means that it is executable once again so an executable bit has been added somewhere and where that has been added is only to the first group which is the user which is the u plus x so the user has now the executable uh, bit attached to the file and so as the user data pioneer if I run the listing or I run uh, executable against test file one again make that executable and run that file as an executable it's going to list out the contents um, you know of the directory that I'm in which is sandbox now of course you lose all the color here that's okay but um, it did execute and so we were able to do that and if I go ahead and remove that again so if I do a chmod u minus x against test file one and then uh, list it out you can see that it no longer is green the file test file one because the executable bit has been removed here okay and uh, and so I will not be able to execute that so if I try to execute the file you can see that it says permission denied so it did not execute it alright and so let's uh, clear the screen again let's do a listing once more and show you that if I want to add the executable bit here for the group and not the user or owner of the file I could do that as well and the way to do that would be to run chmod and instead of user I say group plus x of test file one okay and if I run a listing again it is green again which means we do have the executable bit uh, turned on somewhere and that somewhere now is the group data pioneer as opposed to the owner you really wouldn't want to do this uh, why would you want to give the group owners more permissions than you do yourself as the user owner of the file but I just wanted to demonstrate that and so let me go ahead and remove that that be g minus x uh, test file one all right now if we run a listing one more time, you can see that now I just returned to a regular file. Okay, so let's uh, let's say that you wanted to, um, for test file one, it's concentrating here on test file one, let's say that you wanted to remove the ability to write to that file as opposed to uh, executing the file, even though it does have content. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this. To do that, I would do a change mod and then for the user, I would uh, remove the ability to write, so U minus W, for test file 1. All right. And so now if we run a listing again on that file, you can see that we cannot, as the user owner, Data Pioneer, in the first group of permissions, I should not be able to write to that file anymore, even though the uh, group assign assigned to that, which is Data Pioneer, the group owner, would have the ability to write to it. And so let's demonstrate that. So as the user, I am a data pioneer as the owner uh, of that file, owner user. And so if I were to echo, and let's echo, uh, can I write to this file? And let me append that so I don't remove the uh, what I have there. So I want it instead of just having, if I just use the one redirection symbol, it's going to overwrite the file. So if I do two, that's going to append to the bottom of the file itself, if I can write to it, that is. And so I should not be able to. And I'm going to redirect that out as an appended redirection to test file one. And it says test file one permission denied. 
and that's because I don't have the ability to write to the file here all right if I add that back so I'm going to do a, a u a chmod u plus w I can type uh, test file one all right so now if I do a listing again I can see that I have the right capability has been returned as permission uh, for that particular user owner data pioneer for that particular file test file one all right and so now if I run a clear the screen here and if I run a listing one more time to give a listing out here and if I uh, now run rerun the echo uh, can I write to this file and append that to test file one All right, it looks like it wrote to the file that time because uh, I didn't get any errors back and so let's take a look at that let's cat the file well first of all let's list the file long listing you can see that it is larger so it looks like it did write to the file fine and so I can do a cat against test file one and sure enough appended to the end of the the original line that I had there in that file I have can I write to this file so it did write to the file alright so I was able to write to it because I was able to put back the right uh, capability on the permissions for that file as the user owner of that file all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at uh, something else here. Let's clear the screen. So let's go ahead and run a listing again of the um, sandbox directory. And so we have the test dir directory, and we have test file one and two. Uh, and so right now, let's take a look at what it means to have write capability of a directory as opposed to write capability on the file that's re be removed. All right, so. Right now I can write to that particular directory and if I do a, a CD into tester alright um, since I have write capability as data pioneer owner user of that directory <clears throat> I should be able to create a file in there and should be able to write to that directory and so let me do a touch of uh, test file 3 while I'm in test dir and so if I run a listing I can see now that I have test file 3 which I created just now and it is empty alright but I was able to write to that particular uh, test dir directory because I have the right capability right there alright and so um, uh, if I go ahead now and let's run a listing one more time alright so we can see that we have that there so if I come back out of tester and uh, run a listing one more time and if I remove the right capability permissions if you will from tester for the user owner test data pioneer I can do that by running chmod and I can do u minus w alright for tester alright and so now if I run let me clear the screen if I run a listing can see that I no longer have the ability to write I remove that write permissions on test dir and so now if I descend back into test dir uh, I should no longer be able to create let me run a listing here I have test file 3 but uh, let me see if I can write there by writing test file 4 into it so if I do a touch uh, test file four it says permission denied okay it's permission denied because I no longer have the ability to write to test dir okay because I removed that write capability permissions okay so if I CD back up um, to sandbox and run the listing one more time and if I replace the write permissions here for data pioneer by adding uh, the the uh, right uh, permission uh, bit to that particular uh, group of uh, permission stream uh, by using chmod uh, and then u plus w 
uh, for tester. Okay, and then if I list it out again, you can see that now the write permissions has been returned uh, to tester. And if I go ahead and repeat the process here that I uh, tried to earlier and failed, which is to touch a file in Sandbox. So let me uh, descend first into uh, tester. Okay, and then let's see if I can uh, create that file. So I'm going to touch a file and call it test file uh, 4. Uh, you can see that I was able to successfully write that file out now now that the write permissions has been returned to the file. So let me go ahead and clear the screen. Okay, so let's recap what we've uh, we've done here. So let's do an ls lh here and list those uh, out again. I'm in subdir now instead of tester, um, but uh, I can still show you uh, what we did. All right, so what we did was we took a look at the directories and files, regular files. We have the D in the first position here in the long listing, human readable, on this directory, which indicates that this is a directory. And then if your uh, distro supports it, you will get blue color here for uh, a directory, which indicates visually that you have a directory, not a file. And then down below that, we have two files, uh, which, of course, everything in Linux is a file, so that's even a file subter is a file as well. But we have test file 3 and test file 4. Both of those are files and we know that because in the first position here these are uh, positioned with a, a dash instead of a, a D. All right, So these are not directories, these are regular files. And then following that we have nine uh, symbols that follow that in the second column and they're in sets of three. So the first set belongs to the user owner, which is Data Pioneer. The second set here of three belongs to the group assigned to Data Pioneer. Okay, if this were something else like root or some other of uh, some other type of uh, group, then that would belong to that group instead of Data Pioneer. But it happens to be the same. It doesn't have to be. And then the last group of three here uh, is the uh, world or others. And so the first group is user owner, second group is group owner, and the third group of permissions is uh, other or world. And so in the particular case of test file three, we can see that the group owner, or I mean the user owner rather, data pioneer here, has read, write, and uh, permissions, but no executable permissions on the file. We can see that the group owner, Data Pioneer, in the second position has read write permissions to that particular file, test file 3, but does not have executable either. And then finally, in the third group, everybody else of the world, they have read permissions on the file, which means they can read the file, but they cannot write to the file and they cannot execute the file, even if it is executable. All right. So they. Uh, or as an executable script. And so they don't have the permissions to run that. And so that's what it looks like for the file. Now for the subdirectory or any directory uh, in, in Linux that is uh, a typical directory which is uh, read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read and execute here for the directory. The first three permissions here uh, in the permission stream in the first group is read, write and execute. So Data Pioneer which is the user owner of that directory can read the directory, can read the contents, can write to that directory, can add to that directory itself, okay, and then has executable permissions for that directory, which means they can descend into or CD into that directory as well. Data Pioneer of the group has the same here for the read, write, execute, as does the user and uh, owner. But the uh, world or other here is read and execute only, which means that everybody else can read the directory, can read the contents and view the contents of the directory, but they can't write to that directory at all. They have no write permissions, can't put any files into that directory, remove any files. And then finally they can descend into though, they can CD into that directory as well. All right, so this has been a quick video on uh, permissions in Linux for directories and files in Linux. 
Uh, I'll be doing a subsequent video. I'll get into more detail. Uh, we'll look closer at uh, numerical assignments of permissions uh, as well in Linux. Right now we looked at symbolic only, but we'll look at numerical uh, permission uh, capability in Linux as well, and how do you go about reading those, how do you go about uh, creating that, how do you uh, change directories, or change uh, permissions rather, on a file using numerical as opposed to symbolic uh, notation. We'll take a look at that later, so if you thought this uh, video was helpful, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel, go ahead and give me a thumbs up for this video, and so this has been Data Pioneer, hope you enjoyed the video, and take care, and we'll take look at you later, take care, bye-bye.